All right. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Spoonsville. Today we're covering the virgin suicides. suicides. That'll be showing up over there. Right here. <laughs> and Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten. Sophia Coppola. Oh, was it? It was 28-year-old Sophia written, Coppola? Yeah. Written and directed. Written and directed. Well, it's based off of a book. Right. Uh, Don't yeah. remember when that came Which, out. Which... Um, what would you call it? A young or youth drama? I don't know. I don't know what you call it. I don't know. It's a drama. It's a drama, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, just, it's a drama. Yeah. 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 It takes place in kind of a affluent suburban, kind of a classic part in the States that you see a lot of movies portray, I suppose. Yeah. But you see the dark side of it. Is that the first Kristen Dunst movie you saw? I don't remember, baby. I really don't. Like, you're asking me these questions. <laughs> First Kirsten Dunst movie I saw was Spider-Man 1. I feel like we haven't said anything at this oh, point. Oh, okay. You, you explain it. Okay. You're the note taker. Okay, it's, it follows a family uh, of five daughters. Where they had the, the husband, the wife, and the five daughters. The youngest, I believe. I think it's the youngest. Yeah. Commits suicide, falls on a fence. Okay, so this, let me try it. Let me try it. Yeah. The first commits suicide. Yeah. And you discover that the family is a very religious family. Right. The parents are extremely strict. The um, the daughters have been in the same school for 10 years or, something, or more. But they don't go out. They're not allowed to go out. Yeah. They're not allowed to socialize. And so there are boys next door who go to the same school that are obsessed with them and um just are always looking out their window at what these girls are doing and that's basically about the kind of access that they have to mm -hmm. them because even at school they hang out with each other i think they're very well aware of the fact that the parents don't want them to socialize so um I guess that the kind of oppression that's, that exists within the home yeah. is that good yeah. that even outside of the home, the girls are not yeah. um, are not defiant. They're kind of like celebrities. You know how you how people can tend to get obsessed with uh, certain celebrities, idolize them, and mm. fantasize about them. They are kind of like that. Yeah. They and, have that mystique too, that yeah. mystery, I think. And yeah. that, that gets people in high school because everyone's in everyone's business, but if there happen to be people that no one really knows much about, it creates yeah. this, everyone loves a mystery. Mystifies yeah. the people, yeah. And it kind of makes them a little, I think, superhuman because everyone else in high school, you realize, oh, well, you know, you can't take that person too seriously because a couple grades ago, they embarrassed themselves by getting too drunk and doing something silly. But these people, we don't know any dirt on them. So it's kind of like, you know, so it gives them this. And, and maybe that's part of the movie is that it shows how, um, how much you can hide drama and trauma and issues in a f household how much of it because you only really see you know if you do visit you know the one character visits to to at one point get closer to the oldest daughter and they regular enough they're watching tv regular enough family they're eating snacks and things like that it's awkward it's a little like quiet but other families are like that so you can never really that's the whole thing behind closed doors all the goings on so i think that's probably part of it yeah the theme of the movie mm -hmm. I feel like this is a story of uh, codependency <laughs> and emotion, uh, childhood emotional neglect or mm. being raised by in emotionally neglectful parents. Right. The parents are extremely emotionally immature. Mm -hmm. When the dad shows it in certain ways, like when her daughter dies, the priest goes to visit and right. he's just watching a game and he's like, oh, let's look at that. And the, and the yeah. priest wants to talk to him about yeah. the passing of his daughter and he just doesn't want to talk about it. He yeah. doesn't want to talk about any kind of anything that's sad. Yeah. He, I remember, walks past the be girl's bedroom trying to, thinking about, should I go in to talk to the girls? Or maybe he wanted to yeah. check in on them and see how they are after uh, their sister committed suicide, but he doesn't actually yeah. go and take it any further. Just because you're soft and yeah. sweet doesn't mean that healthy. you're emotionally mature. Yeah. And so avoidant. emotional neglect. Un unhealthy family systems. Un yeah, unhealthy yeah. family systems. You see that much more with the mom because she has much more of authority in the family. And so she wants the kids to assume the kind of character uh, or persona that she believes a good girl is supposed to be. And that's where I think um, that codependency stuff comes in where your yeah. your parent wants you to be an extension of yourself and doesn't yeah. 
feels threatened by the notion of you becoming an individual who yeah. they may not be able to interact with yeah. if you... they might might start to change they might not relate to them in the same way they won't be able to control they might have to make mistakes on their own and, and get into trouble and have to learn things the hard way or you know they don't interact with their kids yeah. on an emotional level yeah. and they invalidate their kids yeah um well in their minds love for them is trying to do the best for them so it's things like punishing them in harsh ways because really in the long term it's good for them like getting their one daughter to burn all her music because to, to punish her for staying past curfew which is pretty severe but in their mind no this is tough love but it's still love and this is the right kind of love and so we do care for you clearly yeah. but it's really unhealthy yeah. for the their, to their do to their kids if i the rating i probably will give a movie <laughs> I don't know. I would say probably seven. I, I was thinking seven. Seven too. out of ten. Yeah. Because um, you 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 also reminded me of some things I did like, but like I did like overall, I I, I liked it. I think, like you said, it, it maybe could have hit home a little bit, you know, more. But then it's also chose a certain perspective. For me, I I liked um, so the lack of character development for me, I felt I was kind of okay with in the end because. Mm -hmm. It was the movie, the way that it was done, like that mystification yeah. of, the, of the, the family was done in a way that allowed me, the viewer, yeah. to put the pieces, pieces yeah. together yeah. and to work out what could have happened. Right. Because Which is what the, the, the boys were trying to do. Exactly. So if, if we knew uh, a lot about the daughters, especially, it would kind of defeat the purpose of us also trying to figure out, like everyone else in the movie... What was this family like? What were they actually like? What was their motive? Why why did they do this? Yeah. yeah. It's very obvious that people are obsessed mm -hmm. with these girls. And so if you grow up in a family like that, where it's extremely strict, but you're getting so much attention out yeah. there and you don't know how to process that and you're yeah. not allowed to, um, to actually engage it yeah. or no one ex explains things to you, that must be incredibly yeah. difficult. Yeah. You're never really allowed to grow emotionally in that kind of mm -hmm. environment. And so for me, as I'm assessing the characters, if these characters were real parents, yeah. I would be, I would, I feel like I would absolutely dislike them. Yeah. That stuff, that's trauma. This that's is a tough. movie, this yeah. is a story about trauma. Yeah. Trauma is not just about getting beaten up. No. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, I, I like the scene where uh, they, uh, they do, uh, agree to the parents agree to let the daughters go with four boys to the homecoming dance and they get in the car and it's interesting because the girls are actually all very chatty with each other but they're all you know they're driving by and they're judging all the neighbors yeah. places they, that's they probably sound that's, like 50 year old women yeah. who have nothing else yeah. better to do than either they gossip. probably they probably pick that up from maybe their parents or when their parents I don't know, who, who, the few maybe relatives that came by. But they and don't sound like teenagers. They don't sound like teenagers. And that's all they really have to probably do as well with each other, right? The few times maybe from what they can see, they're out, they're always just in their room together. So all they can really talk about that they can see is, you know, their, their neighbors' lawns and, and their houses and everything. Yeah. So. If, and I think the hardest part about situations like that is because you're not getting beaten up. You can't really say you went through whatever kind of trauma. So it really sucks. You go through life having this feeling that you were robbed of something, mm -hmm. you know, something is missing. Or also maybe you don't really kind of know how to navigate life properly because yeah. I cannot imagine how these girls, if they did live, how they would navigate life Yeah, because they have, they haven't lived yeah. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you're going to have kids, but you feel like you want to raise them outside of the mainstream, then explain to the kids why? This is why we're doing things differently. Yeah. But, you know, you're going to come across this because we are still letting you go to school, interacting with the rest of the people around us. So these are kind of why, in case things are confusing, why they're different from what we do at home. Got to explain it because otherwise kids are going to be that that level of confusion is really going to it's either going to cause a, a rift with the relationship with the parents, which then defeats the purpose of the parents wanting to keep such a tight knit family. Yeah. Um, yeah, the more you squeeze, the more you try and control, right? The, the, the more it, it pushes people away. Um, but yeah, it's just explain. Or if you're really going to try and live very different from the mainstream, then get a place way out in the woods somewhere. Homeschool. Homeschool, you know, just survival tactics and then just kind of do, you know, like a, a Mr. Fantastic do that. Although even in that movie, you can see that once they start interacting again in the mainstream, it causes confusion. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. That's why I just explain, communicate with your kids about the world. The world's confusing. Try your best to. 
yeah. talk about it. So you yeah, can do. I, I, th- I was thinking of something. I lost my train of thought. Damn, there's so many things actually mm-hmm. that I'm finding uh, in this movie. I oh, nice. we got we got to wrap it up. Go. Let's no, we're not wrapping it up. Things I liked. I like the music. I'm guessing it probably is supposed to take place in the '70s sometime. They're playing a lot of harp, a lot of classic rock. Some good use of that. I liked Hart when they were uh, making out in the car. Yeah. Air. Air. One of my oh, favorite yeah. bands. I love. Great I use love of Air. Love Air. <laughs> yeah. Young Kirsten Dunst. Young Hayden Christensen. That was a nice surprise. Yeah. Young got Josh Hartnett. Young Josh Hartnett. Got uh, to see. Got to see Hayden before you know his uh, more well-known role as in Life as a House and then Shattered Glass. Yeah. You know, the, the, I Hashtag don't know. I'm I, flashbacks <laughs> in the Kenobi series. Make it happen. I, I don't know. That movie actually gave me a lot more to reflect on than I thought. When I saw it, after watching it, I felt kind of like, what do you, we, we were like, what do you think? And yeah. we were just kind of yeah. lukewarm. Yeah. But now then that I. talk about it, you're like, it yeah. brings up a lot of good things. I'd probably put it like a 7.5 maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I think yeah. I think it's because there is good stuff in it. I think it's just still at the end, though, I'm still just kind of like, hmm, yeah, you know, I, I like the, the end party scene where, you know, uh, there is a bunch of toxic toxins that get into the water system, and then that causes all the, the, the rich suburb people to, oh, no, everything's, you know, all the water supply is really smelly, smells of, I can't remember, some chemical, but then they have a, a party, a fancy party, and then the 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 theme of it is they're all wearing gas masks and everything which you know i thought was a, In poor a, taste. a, a very poor taste because lux the kirsten, kirsten dunn gas kills inhalation herself. yeah and so yeah it's one of those things where it shows again how once it kind of passes beyond recent memory for some people they just want to make it this kind of morbid kind of ooh that would be kind of someone probably suggested it as like a off-color joke and they're like why don't we have a party that's the theme you know and then that's how people just move on i think it it was reminiscent of real life, honestly, yeah. because that happens all the time. Yeah. People kill themselves and, oh, it's a shock. And yeah. then you move on with your lives. Yeah. 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 Like one of the people at the party that they throw at the end was like, oh, I'm a teenager. I have problems. Yeah. yeah. Which there are people who think that way, which irritates me mm-hmm. <laughs> so much. <laughs> I always wonder why how an adult can get to a point of mocking adolescents. Yeah. yeah. Is it because they were privileged enough to come from a family that truly genuinely loves you? Right. And you were... They they can't understand that kind of, you know, inner agony that some go through. But at the same time, I feel like if you did come from a a fully functional, healthy family that loved you, I don't know. I feel like you would be more sensitive Mm. to people's troubles even if you didn't explain experience them yourself i I don't know depends it kind of depends of course on the person but yeah i feel the movie depicted adolescence quite well to be Mm -hmm. honest Mm -hmm. uh the the awkward dance the awkward dance yeah the being horny is that can you say that on youtube sure we're gonna get demonetized the hankering for Mm -hmm. male female interaction or male to male interaction depending mm. on what, what you're, you're into. into um lux is particularly you know hungry mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, and yeah several and times she on the roof ravenous. don't know how she pulled that off without working yeah she just gets once she gets a taste <laughs> the feelings the deep feelings of adolescence where yeah. you feel every single thing yeah. like the tiniest feeling yeah. is, or the tiniest well, experience is yeah. just magnified. Yeah. It's like momentous. Yeah. And it's a lot of new experience. stuff all at once. Yeah. You get the first time, could be the first time, uh, yeah, like having a crush or, or, or dating or those kind of a lot of firsts in relationships, a lot of firsts maybe with bullying or being, you know, shunned or being, or being seen with a lot more attention or it's a yeah. lot of, you know, you develop bodies, whatever, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a lot of firsts, so it's yeah. overwhelming. If your parent f- was always emotionally available mm-hmm. and always validated your yeah. feelings... You'd be checked in a lot more frequently. Exactly. Than, you than... would pursue them and, to, and tell yeah. them about what's going on in your life. Yeah. And so for people to say that, oh, to mock adolescents yeah. like that... It's churlish. Yeah, just remembering that. God, high school was rough. Yeah. 
liking people, not being liked. Smelling lockies. <laughs> going out, needing to go out, not feeling like if you didn't. The, the lock, you, you didn't quite, you know, you gotta do the whole thing over again and then get the lock. The first, like, 20 times you gotta try and remember your lock combination. If you don't quite, you gotta break it in, so if you don't quite hit it right on the right tick there, then it doesn't open. Going back to it now. When you get good at the locks, then they're fun. You can do it without even, you can just talk to people, you can be on your phone, you can just, it's like you're breaking okay, into that's, your that's professional enough, thief. That's enough about the locks. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, that's it. I, I, this was apparently Sofia Coppola's first movie. I don't know if it was her first movie, but she was young. So maybe she did another short film or something. Maybe. She was like 28, okay, so, yeah. or 26 when she first time. Yeah. It's probably her first. So but, I would say, that's yeah. why I give her an 8. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I'll go over a 7, you give her an 8, 7.5. You said we're bumping it up to an 8. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Did not say that. Okay, 5. Watch the footage. Okay, 5. <laughs> seven. So a 7.5 between us. I think that's yeah, solid. That's seven, pretty solid. 7.5. Yeah. yeah. So, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Sofia Coppola. Thank you, everyone, for thank watching. <laughs> yeah, and you guys out here, out there in and the and big Sophia, bad world. And if you're watching, thank you yeah. for watching, Sophia. All right. So that's what we felt. What did you guys have? You seen the Virgin Suicides? Hopefully, you have. Yeah, let let us know yeah. what you think. I'm interested to yeah to hear about or just what talk about. Let us know about any movie you saw in the comments. It doesn't have to be Virgin Suicide related. It could be any movie. Okay, that's just it. Just give a comment. Let's say goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Sweet.